guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play Take Me Out by Franz Ferdinand. For the basics of this song, you'll just need your guitar and standard tuning and you're good to go. Now, if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve any guitar in general, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. All right, let's jump into the lesson. So first up, I'm going to show you all of Alex Kapranos' guitar parts. So he's the lead singer in the band. And in the second half of this video, I'll teach you all of Nick McCarthy's guitar parts, which is the second guitar. Now in terms of tone, you don't have to be very particular. It's quite a forgiving song in terms of guitar tone. For me, I'm just using the bridge pickup. I've got my volume and tone set at 10. And on my amp, I just have the gain up enough so that I've got a little bit of grittiness, a little bit of drive on my guitar. You don't want to add too much gain to the point where it's really distorted and gritty. If you have a clean amp, then you can also achieve a similar result by just adding an overdrive pedal in front of your clean amp. I'll leave a link to my Boss Katana tone patch in the description below. So let's start with the intro and there's five lines of tab here. So we're gonna start with our index finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string. So it's just the E note. We're gonna start by striking the open sixth and fifth strings with a quick down, up, down. And then after that, on the two beat, we'll pick it back up by plucking the fifth string by itself at eighth notes for the rest of the bar. So two and three and four. And together with that quick little bit of strumming. And then for the rest of this line on the tab, we're going to continue playing that fifth string at eighth notes for another three bars. So that's it for the first line of tab. For the second line of tab, we're going to continue on with this E note for a full bar at eighth notes. So one, and two, and three, and four. And we go up to the F sharp, so ninth fret for a full bar. Then up to the tenth fret, the G for half a bar. So there's four plucks here. One, and two, and back down to the ninth for the rest of the bar, three and four and, and then the fourth bar is just back to the E note for a full bar. So that's the second line of tab, which will sound like this. We get to our third line of tab and we're going up to the G with our index finger. We're gonna pluck this for half bar, one and two, and, and then with our ring finger up to the 12th fret, for the rest of the bar, and then back down to the seventh fret for a full bar. And then we go down to the third fret of the sixth string, and we're gonna pluck this for half a bar. And then with our pinky finger, fifth fret of the fifth string, we're gonna pluck this for the rest of the bar. And then we're gonna hit the open sixth string for the final bar. So this third line of tab, for the fourth line of tab, we're going to go back to this G note on the sixth string. We're going to pluck this for a full bar. And then we're going to pluck the fifth fret of the fifth string for another full bar. Then we'll shift this exact shape down two frets. So we'll hit the first fret of the sixth string for a full bar. And then So this fourth line of tab. For the fifth line of tab, we get into an E5 power chord position. So index on the seventh fret of the fifth string and ring and pinky on the ninth frets of the fourth and third string. For the first bar, we'll just start by focusing on the root notes of the fifth string. Then we, as we get to the second and third and fourth bars, we'll slowly increase the amount of strings that we're going to hit and the intensity at which we'll hit it. There's also a tempo shift here, so it's a little bit tricky, but we'll gradually slow down the tempo as we're striking this at eighth notes with all down strums. So the final line of tab. One, two, three, So that's it for the intro. I'll play it all the way through now, but for this second line of tab, I'm just gonna play it through once and not four times like in the actual song. If you wanna see it in context at full speed, then just go to the end of this lesson in the playthrough. But here's the intro. <laughs>
Next, we get to what I'm gonna call the break section. And there's just one line of tab here. So we're going to stay in this position here. So this E5 power chord, but then we're gonna lift our ring finger. So we're just playing an E octave. Now, when you're playing this E octave, it's really important that your index finger lightly rests across the strings below that root note. We're not gonna bar the index finger down and push those strings down. We're just lightly resting it on top of the other strings so that they're all muted. And by doing so, when you strum all the strings, only the root note and that octave are the notes that ring out. And that way you can really get aggressive with the strumming here. So with this octave shape, we're gonna be strumming a down, 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 up, down. So get that rhythm into your strumming hand first. Down, 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 up. Now, after the first two down strums, we're actually going to momentarily lift our fretting hand, and that's how you get that staccato stabby sound. So strum and then lift your fretting hand like that. Don't let it ring out. So we're gonna do that after the first two strums. Down, down, and then we're gonna do down. Momentarily lift our fretting hand for that muted strum, and then we're gonna go with an up strum, fretted, and then finally an up. And on the final down, we're gonna lift our fretting hand and hit some open strings. So the second half of this, down, up, up, down. And all together, down, 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 up, up, down. And we're just gonna repeat that through four times for this break. Next we get to the main riff. So we're gonna start with the eighth fret of the second string with our middle finger. And then we're gonna to go to the ninth fret of the third string with our ring. We're gonna pluck that again and pull off to the seventh fret. And then we're gonna go down to the ninth fret of the fourth string. So pull off, down to ninth, and then back up to the seventh fret of the third string, and then end with the ninth fret of the third string. Now this actually starts on the end beat after the one, so we're not starting on the one beat. So it'll be one end. That bar is repeated through three times. And then for the fourth bar, we're gonna to go to the seventh fret of the second string, and we're gonna pluck this continuously with a down up picking motion. And this starts on the end beat after the one. And we're gonna pluck this at 16th notes. Subdivisions of 16th notes, it's one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So we're gonna start this on the end beat after the one. So, so one E and a two E and a three E and a. And then on the four E and a, we're gonna move our next finger down to the seventh fret of the third string for the final four E and a. So the final bar, one E and a two E. Now, one thing that you can do in order to make this sound even more rhythmic is to just mute a lot of the strings around the note you're fretting. So fret that seventh fret, but with your index finger, make sure it's lightly touching the first string below it. So that note is muted. Now for the strings above that second string, what I do is I use my free ring or middle finger to lightly touch those ones above the second string. So only second string rings out, and that way I can just kind of strum all the strings with a down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, and then move to the seventh fret of the third string. And the same thing applies, I'm muting the bottom strings with my index finger and muting the strings above it with my middle and ring. And then you can do this. One, two, three, So that's the main riff, which will sound like this. One. If that muting technique is too difficult for you at this stage, then you can just focus on plucking the string individually. That's it for the main riff, and that particular line of tab is just played through twice. Next we get to the verse, and Alex is just playing some power chords here. The rhythm is basically the same as the break that we had. So the down, 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 down up, up, down. And even the location of the mute and the open strings at the end is the same. Instead of playing an E octave though, we're gonna play an E power chord. So you can just 
play the fifth and fourth string with your index and ring finger, or you can use your pinky finger here to play that fourth string. And that's what I actually like to do. Now, when you're playing this power chord, you also want to mute all the strings below it. And you can do that with your index finger lightly resting on those strings. So we have the same rhythm pattern as what we had in the break. And even on the final down strum, we'll just hit some of the open strings. So it will sound like this. We're gonna do that twice for the E power chord. We're gonna take this shape down to the A power chord, so fifth fret of the sixth string and seventh fret of the fifth string. We're gonna play the exact same rhythm, but instead of hitting open strings on the final down strum, we're gonna actually shift our index finger up and hit the sixth fret of the sixth string. So. And then we'll go up to the B power chord, which is one fret up. We're gonna play this for one full rhythmic pattern. That's it for the first line of tab, which will sound like this. That line of tab is just repeated through twice and that's it for the verse. We then get to another main riff section and this time around it's only played once, not twice. Then there's another verse, which is the same as verse one. And then we get to our pre-chorus, which is the same as our break, except it's half as long. So we're only playing two bars of this rhythmic pattern with this E octave shape. <laughs> So next we get to the chorus. We're gonna start with a C6 chord, so we're just gonna bar our index finger across the fifth frets of the third, second, and first strings. Now the rhythm here is down, up, up, down. Now the first down strum is gonna be muted, and then on the up strum, we're gonna fret down our hand. On the next up strum, it's muted. And then on the fourth strum, we're gonna push our fretting hand back down. So that will sound like this. Down, up, for the second half of the bar, we're gonna do exactly the same, but we're gonna use our ring finger to bar across the seventh frets. So this is a D6, so mute up, mute down, and the bar in total. That one bar is just repeated again eight times for the whole chorus, so it's really simple. I'll play this bar through four times so you can just hear it in context, but in the song, it's played through eight times. After the first chorus, we have another main riff, and this is just played through once, not twice. We then get to verse number three. Now verse number three is similar to verse one and verse two, except there's a third line of tab. Now for the third line of tab, it's basically the same as the other lines of tab, except when we get to this B power chord, we're just gonna strum it once, and then there's a break for the rest of the bar. So I'll just play the last two bars here. And that's the only difference between verse three and verse one and two. So after verse three, there's another main riff, which is just played through once, and then another pre-chorus. We have a second chorus, which is just the same as chorus one. Then finally we have the outro, which is the same as the pre-chorus and break rhythm with our octave shape. We're gonna play that rhythm through for three bars, and then for the fourth bar, we're just gonna end by hitting the open sixth string and the seventh. So those are all of Alex's guitar parts. Okay, so now I'm gonna teach you all of Nick McCarthy's guitar parts. So this is the second guitar that's layered on top of Alex's guitar parts. I'm just gonna use the exact same guitar tone. Now for the intro, there's eight lines of tab here. For the first line of tab, it's identical to Alex's guitar part. So we're gonna start with our index finger on that seventh fret of the fifth string. We're gonna start with that down, up, down strum. And then pick it back up on the two beat where we'll continuously just hit the fifth string at eighth notes again and again for four bars. Now for the second line of tab, we're gonna go up to the fifth fret of the fourth string. And we're gonna pluck that with all down strokes at eighth notes for a full bar. One, two, three, four. We'll go down to the fourth fret for a full bar. Then we'll go up to the ninth fret for four plucks, down to the seventh fret for three plucks. And on the end beat after the four, we'll then go down to the fifth fret. So this third bar, one, two, three, 
this fifth fret for five plucks. One, and two, and three. And then we'll go down to the fifth fret of the fifth string for two plucks. And four. And then go up to the seventh fret for the final pluck. So the final bar. One, and two, and three, and four. And the second line of tab. Now the third line of tab is identical to the second line of tab with the exception of the final bar. Now for the final bar, we're gonna stay on this fifth fret for seven plucks and on the end beat after the four, we then go down to the fifth fret of the fifth string. So one, two, three, four. And that's the only difference there. For the fourth line of tab, we're gonna start off hitting the seventh fret of the fifth string and then go back up to the fifth fret of the fifth string for the rest of the bar. So the first bar here, one, two, and three, and four. The second and third bars are identical to the second and third bars of the other lines of tab. For the end of the third bar though, we'll land on the fifth fret with our middle finger here. And for the fourth bar, we'll continue on with two plucks. And then we'll alternate between the fourth string and fifth string three times. So two, three, four. So the fourth line of tab. The fifth line of tab is basically the same as the third line of tab, except instead of going down to this fifth fret of the fifth string, we're just going to continue on with the fifth fret of the fourth string for the final bar. For the sixth line of tab, we stay on this fifth fret of the fourth string. We're going to pluck this for half a bar. One and two and then go up to the seventh fret for three plucks. Three and four. On the end beat, we'll go down to the seventh fret of the fifth string. So this first bar. One and two and three and four. The second bar will continue on this note for the full bar. One, two, three, four. Then down to the fifth fret of the fifth string for half a bar. One, two, three, then we're going to go fifth, seventh, twice. So one, two, three, four. And then for the fourth bar, we'll hit the seventh fret for the full bar. One, two, three, four. So the sixth line of tab. The seventh line of the tab will go down to the fifth fret of the fifth string. We'll play that for two bars, and then we'll go down to the third fret, and we're going to play that for another two bars as well. For the final line of tab, we're going to go back up to the seventh fret of the fifth string, but we're going to actually play an E minor bar chord shape like this. So we've got the root note ring and pinky on the ninth frets of the fourth and third string, and middle finger on the eighth fret of the second string. And similar to Alex's guitar parts, we're just going to slowly build this up in terms of the amount of strings we're going to play, but we're also slowing the tempo down. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, two. So altogether, the intro will sound like this. So next we get to the break section. Now the rhythmic pattern is similar to the break that Alex has played. So the rhythmic pattern with our right hand is down, 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 up, up, down. Now for the first two strums though, after we strike the chord, we're going to just momentarily lift our fretting hand so we get that stabby 
staccato sound. So, and then we're gonna go down, up, up, and on the final down string, we're just gonna hit some open strings. So, and all together. And that's just played through four times for this break. Next, we get to the main riff section. Now, for Nick McCarthy's guitar part, it's very rhythmic and he's just hitting some single notes here. So we're gonna focus on the seventh fret of the third string. So just play that with your index finger. We're gonna be plucking or strumming this with a down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. And then on the next up strum, we're gonna hit the ninth fret. And then end with one more up on the 7th and ninth fret. So all together, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down. Now this actually starts on the end beat after the one as well. And this is at 16th notes. So one, yeah. Now if you wanna get really rhythmic, then what you should do is mute the strings around that note. So with your index finger hitting that seventh fret, lightly rest it across the second and first strings. Don't fret down, but make contact with those strings so they're muted. And then I use my free middle finger to lightly touch the strings above that note. And that way I can just strum it rather than pluck it. Like that. So that bar is played through twice. And then we go down to the fifth fret of the third string. And we're gonna pluck this or strum it with a down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up. Or strummed. And for the final bar, we're gonna go back up to the seventh fret. We're gonna hit this with a down, up, down, up, and then a up, down, up. And then on the next down strum, we're gonna hit the seventh fret, the fourth string with our middle. And then on the final up strum, seventh fret on the fifth string. So up, down, up, down. So you can do that plucked or strummed with muted strings. And all together, this line of tab. One E. Now that's just played through twice for the main riff, and it's also used in the verse as well. So for the majority of the song, Nick McCarthy is actually just playing that line of tab through again and again. So the next section to learn is just the pre-chorus, which is basically the same as the break, but it's just only played for two bars. So Next we get to the chorus and there's some single note riffs here. So we're gonna start with the seventh fret of the fourth string, hit that twice, then 10th fret on the fifth, twice, ninth fret, twice, down to seventh fret, and then 10th fret on the sixth string. All at eighth notes. So one, and two, and three, and four. Then for the second bar, we'll go to the seventh fret of the sixth string, pluck that with a down, and then on the up pluck, we're going to hit the eighth fret. So down, up, and then on the next up stroke, we're going to hit the seventh fret again, and on the next down stroke, eighth fret. So down, up, up, down. And then for the second half of this, we're going to pluck the eighth fret again. And then on the up stroke, the 10th fret. On the next up stroke, 8th fret again. 10th fret. On the down stroke, and then one more 10th fret. So down, 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 down. And the bar in total. And those two bars actually repeated through four times for the chorus. I'm just gonna play through this first line of tab though, and it will sound like this. Now the rest of the song is just comprised of parts that we've already learnt. A lot of it is that really rhythmic lick that he plays in the main riff in the verse. For the outro, it's just that rhythmic pattern on the E minor chord played for three bars and then we end by just hitting the open sixth string and the seventh fret of the fifth string. So those are all of Nick McCarthy's parts. Now my biggest tip for practicing this song is that you should play along and practice with a metronome. 
This song is incredibly rhythmic, so it's really important that you get those riffs and licks in time along with the metronome, otherwise they will sound really, really messy. Be sure to practice the parts at a slower metronome speed first and then slowly work your way up once you're comfortable at those slower speeds. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of both parts. I'll start with a playthrough of all of Alex's parts and then I'll do a playthrough of all of Nick's guitar parts. And I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to to practice, play along to and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you want to grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerodihero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.